Hello, and let's talk about chasing the boogeyman. Now, I know I'm late to the party, but it's because my TBR pile is out of control. So, Chasing the Boogeyman was the trade debut novel by Richard Chismar, the founder of Cemetery Dance Publications, which is a touchy subject in and of itself. I'm not going to get into that. That would be a topic for its own video. I'm here simply to talk about Chasing the Boogeyman, and in particular, I want to talk about three things. The first being the genre, the second being the book itself, and the third being the marketing, which... If you are a fan of Richard Chismar or a customer of Cemetery Dance, you are probably very much familiar with the marketing. Anyways, let's start with the genre. You're probably thinking, why aren't you talking about the book first? Why are we talking about the genre? And well, the reason is that it's hard to talk about the book without talking about the genre. So Chasing the Boogeyman, uh, Richard Chismar's trade debut novel, uh, is fiction. And that is an important thing to note. However, the entire novel is structured as if it's nonfiction, as if it's true crime. Uh, he even starts off with a little page here, a note to the reader saying it is a work of fiction, an homage to his hometown, a passion for true crime. But then immediately, once again in the novel itself, you get a forward by James Renner, who is a real-life true crime uh, author and podcaster, talking about a real-life true crime Richard Chismauer and Chasing the Boogeyman. Followed by an introduction, written supposedly by Richard Chismar back in 1990, describing his time uh, writing the original Chasing the Boogeyman novel, published in the early 90s, uh, to which it's very easy to see the lines between fact and fiction are blended, which is, it's purposely done. And it's not misleading in any way. Like I said, it is, it's found under fiction. Uh, it's labeled as fiction. There's a note to the readers in the beginning that it is fiction. But the novel itself likes to blend those lines between fact and fiction, and it does so in what is probably its strongest point. It does so in such an excellent way. Uh, I mean, Richard Chismar is the main character and the author, but it's more of a fictionalized version, a multiverse version of Richard Chismar, if you will. The real Richard Chismar is kind of quieter. Uh, he's not as outgoing as the Richard Chismar found within these pages. Uh, but a lot of the details are true and yanked straight out of Richard Chismar's life. The Richard Chismar in the novel did form Cemetery Dance, which happened in real life. He did marry Kara. He did have his, his sons. They're the same sons in real life. Uh, it's very much a fictionalized but semi-autobiographical version of Richard Chismar. Like, there are images uh, thrown throughout the book that kind of try to cement the true crime feel. Uh, this is a picture of Cemetery Dance Magazine number one, which is in fact the real cover of Cemetery Dance Magazine number one. And there are all these, like I said, photos throughout to kind of uh, blur the lines between fact and fiction, to really give it that true crime aesthetic. And that is definitely the strongest point of the novel. Uh, if you didn't know going in that this was fiction, you could very well believe the Boogeyman was a real threat to Ed Edgewood, Maryland, instead of the... Uh, fictitious boogeyman that actually exists in these pages, uh, who's inspired by a real-life uh, phantom fondler, by the way. Fun name, a uh, real-life person, real-life uh, criminal. But anyways, that is neither here nor there. So uh, that's the genre. The book itself is all right. I mean, it reads like a great true crime novel, which is kind of a contradiction there because it's a fictitious true crime. Therefore, I guess it's kind of fake crime. It's a fake crime novel. Uh, if you like I'll Be Gone in the Dark, you'll probably like this. Um, however, if you like I'll Be Gone in the Dark, you're probably a fan of true crime, in which case this is not actually true crime, which might deter you a little bit. Uh, it, it's hard to talk about it without... I don't want I don't want to say it's going to be spoilers because if you read just the introduction, you quickly learn that uh, Richard Chismar despite being this true crime aficionado, uh, being a teenager, uh, young adult, trying to solve this boogeyman mystery, uh, doesn't actually succeed. Uh, the, the introduction reveals that the boogeyman is caught after the events of 1988 and 1989, which is where the novel takes place. Uh, so that's a little bit of a letdown, uh, you know, because if you're, if you're going to make a fictitious serial killer that you're chasing after who's hunting young kids in Edgewood, Maryland, you might as well catch the guy, right? I mean, authors like to inject themselves into the works, but uh, 
Uh, Stephen King, his own friend, does it all the time. He even added himself as a character in The Dark Tower. And this one takes to an extreme. He adds himself as a uh, wannabe sleuth trying to solve the mystery. And uh, he's ultimately not successful. It's still a very fun read, but I feel like if you're going to go with the fictional route, you should integrate yourself more. Uh, He's very much, even though he's the main character, he's not as directly involved in the investigation as, like, he's not working hand-in-hand with the police. He's very much solving it on his own. Uh, And it ends with a... So, going back to the fake... uh, True crime story here. Uh, Chasing the Boogeyman is described as being a original novel published in the early 90s. This is a revised version uh, that is now taking place in 2019 after the Boogeyman has been caught. And so it has a new ending. Uh, it has an afterword in which Richard Chismar goes to interview a see, September 2019, which is now adult, older Richard Chismar, 30 years older, now goes to interview the Boogeyman. And I got to say, if you're going to add that kind of closure, you should add closure. Um, he doesn't, he interviews him, but there are still unanswered questions. He even mentions it in here. It's like, it's like the uh, killer is trying to set up a future interview, which given that this is a year later, the book came out in 2021. I'm reviewing this right before Halloween 2022. It makes sense because he's setting it up for a sequel, which has already been signed. He's already, he's already signed the contract for that. So Chismar is, in fact, working on a sequel. Um, And the paperback just came out as well, which brings us to our third point, my third point of the video, the marketing. If you are a customer of Cemetery Dance Publications or a uh, subscriber of their newsletter or Richard Chismar's newsletter, you will probably know the overabundance of marketing material for Chasing the Boogeyman here. Uh, First... First of all, being just the regular marketing saying, hey, if you pre-order a copy, you'll get a signed book plate, which is awesome. Uh, there is a signed special edition coming out from SSD Publications over in the UK, but I'm not going to buy it. I mean, the book was good, but it didn't wow me enough that I need to have another signed edition, especially since I have a signed book plate here. Um, so with the paperback now being out and there being a week left until Halloween, there's currently a promotion going on where Richard Chismar says if you buy the paperback between in the month of October, you're entered for a chance to win a signed Stephen King book, which is incredible. He's a friend with Stephen King. He has access to these signed books and he's passing this access along to you, the buyer. And he did the same thing a year ago when this novel came out. Uh, he said, Hey, if you buy a copy, you get, you entered for a chance to win a signed, uh, copy of what was uh, Sleeping Beauties, the Cemetery Dance Edition. I didn't win, but I saw, I know the person on Facebook who did win, which is awesome. When the Gwendy trilogy came out, if you pre-ordered the third title, you had a chance to win a signed copy signed by Stephen King. I know the person who won it. It's awesome. Uh, But he does other promotions as well, and almost to an overabundance. Uh, A lot of people are angry because Cemetery Dance has a very big delay on their signed limited editions, but Richard Chismar was very much pushing his own novel. Like I said, that's the case for another video, but there was a lot of pushing for this novel. Uh, One such example was I had already pre-ordered a copy. I got an email saying, hey, if you buy a copy of Chasing the Boogeyman in the next 24 hours, send proof of purchase. I'll send you a uh, a $25 gift card for Cemetery Dance. The cost of the book on Amazon was less than $25. So I buy from Cemetery Dance. I'm in it for a profit. So wouldn't you know, I bought a second copy. And just like that, I now own twice as many copies. Just like before, he sends a book plate, he sends a bookmark, and I have a nice signed copy. And then a week goes by, and you get another email. And it says, hey, do you like Stephen King? He's got a new book out called Billy Summers. If you buy a copy of Chasing the Boogeyman in the next 24 hours, I'll give you a first edition of Billy Summers. And I'm thinking, well, I mean, I already have two copies of Chasing the Boogeyman. But I was going to buy Billy Summers anyways, and the cost of Billy Summers would be more than the cost of Chasing the Boogeyman Chasing the Boogeyman on Amazon. So, of course, I bought a third copy. And now I've got three signed copies. You get the signed book plate again, and then you get a nice little copy of Billy Summers. Wouldn't you know, it's a first edition copy. Very nice. Was going to buy it anyways. And then a week goes by, you get another email from Richard Chismar saying, hey, Cemetery Dance makes nice Stephen King slipcases. 
I know, I buy them. And would you like a free copy of a Billy Summers slipcase? If so, buy in the next 24 hours. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I was gonna buy the slipcase anyways. So I might as well buy a fourth copy. Wouldn't you know? I've got four copies of the damn book. And this book ended up becoming New York Times bestseller. And I'm thinking, how many of that is just from four fools like me buying multiple copies? Suddenly I've become part of the street team. I'm not really screaming this book from the rooftops. It's a good book. It's a fun read. But I've got four copies. Man, it makes me wonder how much legitimacy there is to the New York Times bestseller uh, status of this title. I mean, all the power to them. The copies of the books that I purchased were cheaper than the goodies I got along the way. It was cheaper than the $25 gift card, Billy Summers, the slipcase, which is still upcoming because of Cemetery Dance Delays, but another video. <laughs> and I've got four copies. Suddenly, I feel like I could give these away for Christmas if I want to. And look at that. You get a free, here's a signed book. You get a signed book. You get a signed book. I'm like Oprah over here, giving out signed Chasing the Boogeyman. And it's not even that powerful of a novel. The genre is fantastic. I really love the blend of uh, fact and fiction within this true crime narrative. That's not actually true crime. But holy crap. The promotions on this thing are just absolutely absurd. It makes you wonder how much money Richard Chismar spent on these advertisements, on these promotions, uh, giving away this and that in order to secure that bestseller status. Now, it's a fun read. Uh, it is available in paperback, and you can go out and buy the paperback. And if you buy it within the next week of when I post this video, you can be entered for a chance to win a signed Stephen King novel. I'm not going to but that's because I already have plenty of copies. And for those of you saying, eh, I don't want to read Richard Chismar, and you're asking yourself, what kind of fool is not happy until he's purchased four copies of Chasing the Boogeyman? My answer to you is not me. I am not that fool because I bought a fifth copy.